Hey guys, how's it going? Hey, I got this Teramite T5C backhoe that I bought 20 years ago. It is a 2000 is the year it was manufactured. It's gas powered. Uh, it was a rental and it was repossessed from a rental company. So it did not get very good love in the beginnings. <laughs> but again, it served me the purpose. I rented one uh, about a couple of times and at some point I said, you know what? I should really just have one of these of my own. I paid at that time 8000 for it. It's probably worth the exact same right now, so it really hasn't lost much or any value. But it does need some love, so that's what this video is going to be about. A couple things I'm aware of, and I'm sure we're going to find some other stuff afterwards. Exhaust leaks, the bucket's got a crack in the back of it, it's got a tire that goes flat, it shuts off once in a while on its own, and sometimes does, sometimes does not fire back up. I believe it's going to be electrical. Ah, uh, what else was going on with it? Not that that's not enough, right? I made a thumb for it. It's a manual, it's got a little bar that goes down in between. It's good for picking up rocks and logs and stacking them around, which is uh, probably about 30% of what I use it for. Yeah, you can see it's been on the trail, I don't know, about a half hour or so. You can already see a bunch of the drips that are coming down on the trail. It's not terrible, but I'd like to address it. Again, that's why I want to kind of pressure wash some of the crap out of there. So I'm gonna go do that. I'm gonna go to the, hopefully, drive-through car wash, and if I don't get kicked out, I'll wash it up and uh, we'll bring it back and bring it in the garage and start giving it a once over and hopefully get some repairs done. Without further ado, let's get in. <laughs> I'll make it easier to pressure wash underneath. Well, now that it's been cleaned in the most intimate of places where you think the chances are it's still gonna fire up, Let's see what we get. Wires might be wet. <laughs> Try to back out first. Next is how are we gonna go fit on those ramps? Let's see what we get. I think the tires might be too close together. It's gonna be close. The back ones will be fine. Let's chalk those wheels up. I've never really gotten underneath this. I never had it on a lift. So let's get some chalks on the tires and flip her up and take a peek. Alright, hopefully we don't get dripped on too much. And we can see what we have to work with. So essentially it is... Hey, just got dripped on. Gas powered engine. Running to a big hydraulic pump, which is that right there. And the hydraulic pump pretty much runs everything. This is the motor that runs to the rear differential and gives you forward and reverse. I see a problem right now too. That's your parking brake. Now I know when my parking brake doesn't work. That's a band that goes around this drum so it's to stop it from rolling. Eh, that was, it took a, probably backed up on some brush and hit something and pushed it out of the way and then that was that. I think we'll let it drip for a day. It's kind of late in the evening anyway. And we'll come back. We'll start getting into it. For you, it'll be 10 seconds. For me, it'll be 
About eight hours. Glad to see everything looks pretty dry under here. This is the area that I'd really be concerned any of those pumps are leaking. I'm sure that filter needs to be changed, but it hasn't been changed in forever. Alright, it's done drip drying. I'm gonna really check this bit. I don't think it has any kind of brake material on it. I think it just uses the metal, is my guess. It's, we'll find out if it doesn't want to wrap around it, then we know it's missing something to spit it out. But it looks like if we take a bolt going through here, it'll drop down and here's the cable coming up from the emergency brake lever. I don't know if the whole assembly is going to drop out. Hopefully it does. I don't want to try to take this apart, but let's get that bolt out. Let's see if we can we rotate that. Looks like it's coming apart. Yeah, it's like the band just kind of attaches. I think we're gonna need a hammer and screwdriver to beat that out of that little area right there. Yeah, look at that, that side's definitely been grinding through there for a while, huh? Yeah, I gotta get it. There we go. It does have brake material. What's left of it? You think that is? plastic or something. Yeah, it's almost like a brake shoe. What if we can get make a thin piece of leather? Problem is it if we go too fat the band's not gonna fit around it, you know? Yeah, so you can get that the rest of the way out of there. Just gotta get it off the cable I guess. Don't think it's supposed to look like that. Let's go beat it back in the submission. I don't know if we're gonna try making a new one or can we salvage what we got here all depends on how strong it is after it's done, you know. That's so beat up, the end already fell off of it. I'm gonna try hammering it flat and see if we can get it to go get straightened out. If not, we're gonna make a new one. Yeah, I'm gonna say it's pretty beat. Got straightened out, but the only thing that's kind of slowing me down is I don't have a material that's gonna be the same as this. This has probably got like a galvy or some kind of coating on it that keeps it from rusting. I'm probably just gonna have like a cold rolled steel. But I think something is better than nothing. Let's go make ourselves a, a new piece of metal. We're back at my metal stash pile. And a couple strips here. What is that? Cut off. See so, so how close that lines up to it. Might be long enough. Oh, it's just gonna almost like it's made for it. <laughs> we could probably cut those ends off and weld them on. Yeah, let's try that. So you need to take this flat piece of metal. I measured that drum, it's roughly six inches across. Let's see what we can do as far as um Getting a roll on. It's got, we gotta drop them down and get it started. We'll just keep running that through. That is not nearly enough. We need to go up on this one. On both sides. I'm going to keep sneaking up on that until it makes a nice tight circle. That's about 12. Ask me how I know. Yeah. 
We could probably make it a little, I think we're gonna want it a little larger than six. Stop it. So that way it kind of springs away from the drum when it's not being used. I think that we're gonna be about it right there, right? That's six and a half. Let's even get it out of there. <laughs> One way or another, you're coming out. There we go. All right, we got a ring to work with. So these are the two ends that need to be attached. They made this one looks like it's all one piece, but I think we'll just cut it and we'll weld it where we need it. And this one was, looks like it just spot welded on the old one. So we could probably weld one on now and then we'll get some leather or something. We'll figure out what we're gonna go glue in place. I wanted to put the leather on after, of course, because the shape changes how much leather would go on. If this was straight, we put the leather on, then we went to go bend it, it would bunch up in a bunch of areas. See, they just had a spot weld. I can get, knock that down. Probably just drill, we'll drill two holes in it and we'll weld, plug weld it. And give her a couple of love zaps. Did I fill that first one? No. That should do it. Falls right off. One of my lays here, I have a belt drive lays, and this is kind of the leather that you would use. Is that leather, that one? That one is. And I figure we'll steal something from here and we'll glue it, glue it to it. Well, that one right there, it's gonna make a mess. I got these, can we double these up? How wide are they gonna be? We'll grab those and we'll grab that big piece. Right there, I'm gonna go over to the bench and we'll see what we like. This stuff is more like a, almost feels like a rubber. Man, I don't wanna use that. It's like a, or like a leather that's got something coated in it. I don't want slippery, you want something that's gonna be kind of stout. I think we're gonna end up with this. And this is what I was talking about with the thickness. The thicker this is, the larger that diameter is gonna to have to be to uh, fit it. Let's go find that old brake shoe material. There it is. That's what was in there. And I'm gonna say it's probably half the thickness of it. And this stuff is pretty much just almost the same as that. So we might as well just go for the one piece, right? And it's a little tall. Let's go see how it, it's the same as the metal. Let me just go take a quick peek on the drum. Make sure the, the fatness, thickness of it is gonna get, talk. <laughs> is it gonna get in the way? back at it. I think we got plenty of room. I don't see anything that's gonna interfere with it. Good. Let's go glue that together. This is a piece we still have to weld on. I so said we stay away from that a little bit. And on this end I think we should probably come to, I don't know, where we think about right about there. And yeah, we'll cut that leather off. Make it that long. Got to go get some two-part epoxy if I pop the cover off. And let's see what I got for a part number for that filter. Let's go grab another one of them. Is that the hours it was at? 11.77. And it is now 2000, 2001, right around there. Really not bad. So I must have changed it maybe probably when I first got it. And we got some five-minute epoxy. And then as you read it, the fine print, it cures in 24 hours. So let's get a bunch of that. 
mixed up. Draw that back. Get a little for next time. And we'll put it on both surfaces and clamp it together. I roughed up both with uh, 80 grit sandpaper, gave them a little bit of tooth to stick to. And we get a bunch of clamps. Oh, that's the that smell that gets you high. It reminds me of building models as a kid. It's got that smell. That's good. So we'll get some slobbered on there real quick. The noise you hear in the background, they've decided to take a tree down behind the building. <laughs> Don't they know we're hanging out inside here? So if we hear a crash, don't be alarmed. I was gonna try uh, spray glue, contact cement, I figure out what would be the better. We'll try this. I think it'll be okay as long as um, I don't forget it and drive it for like two hours with the emergency brake on and it kind of rubbing itself away. And the hydrostack tractors really don't, it doesn't really creep, plus you put like the bucket down and stuff. But it's good when it's, you're putting it on like an angled trailer and you're trying to get off the tractor and Tie it down. I think we're two minutes in already. <laughs> Are we going to have enough? I will let that set up and go back to it later. Let's go jump on something else. I'm sure we could find plenty of things to work on. So while I was cleaning the tractor up, I did such a good job. I saw some stuff I wasn't aware of. I kind of knew that was going to happen. We got a crack going on the frame right there. And guess what the other side has? Yeah, same thing. So there's that and the bucket has a bunch in it too. You can see the seam right here is gone all the way around there's a crack forming right down in the center of it right there so let's uh fire it up we'll uncurl it and get that so maybe we can start doing some work on getting that stuff fixed up while we got the welder out well, that's got water in it can't weld water well Try to flip that right around and lay it out. It'd be easier to weld. We can get her unhooked. Good place to start. Yeah, let's go get a grinder. And we'll at least kind of prep the metal. I think probably more of the weld should be done on the inside. But let's get a good bead 
one down around there. Looks like it's just from rubbing against rocks, maybe. On second thought, I think it'd be better off just trying to get the bucket right off. I've never taken it off. I'm not sure if we need to remove that or not. See if, if you can get it with the pin. I think the pin should do it. Maybe. <laughs> My guess is probably about 100 pounds. That's it. Watch your fingers. <laughs> now we can manipulate it and get a, you know, instead of trying to weld uphill, downhill, underneath. Well, I thought about drilling on one end, you, know, you get a crack going, you drill on one side, you drill on the other side. Supposedly stops it from going any further. I am just going to go put a blob on each end. We'll start there, so that has like a little bit of a wall to hit. Most of it, the strength is going to come from the inside well, not the outside, but for now we're going to go, we'll go all the way up to where I ground it. I might be out of out of gas. Back don't like it. You turn it down some see if you get any better. See if that does any better for us. That's better. We'll put one tack in the middle, probably give it a couple of wax, try to close it up a little. Yeah. That did nothing. a lot of the dirt is fighting it too that's popping out of the center that I couldn't get out. Excuses, right? Not much there for a thick for a beast of a machine. I gotta go buzz that I don't want to kill the camera. Yeah, hindsight, what I should have done is I should have laid a piece of metal in behind it. It's like a round bar or something. You give it some backing because this was super thin. That's why it wore off there. Well, you know, it was paper thin on the edge there. So I was having a hard time going thick to thin. So what I did is I just kind of stitched the center of it real, just to kind of fill the gap. And then I went back over it and circled it. She ain't pretty, but at least it's solid. I'm going to go grind that back a little bit. And I think we have the same thing kind of happening on the other side. Let's get that done. And then we'll jump over to see what we're going to do about this right here. What's the old saying? The grinder is great for the welder that you ain't. It's okay. Should hold water. Again, we're, I'm going to buzz it from the inside also. And that's where it's going to get all its strength. Because this always wants to try to... You're putting stuff in a bucket. It's always trying to pull apart. Uh, where I can kind of go bridge the center. Hopefully on that. So let's go flip it over. It, there's about a yo big one on that side. But I should probably just do the whole thing over there. You can see that one's blowing out right in there. Starting a little bit there. But again, it just gets so thin from rubbing against rocks, it wears that edge right down. So we should probably just do the whole thing like the other side, probably from there to there. Well, that's not helping things. It's out of shielding gas. Well, now that I got rid of my excuse, let's see how that does. Well, it definitely looks better from far away. <laughs> I'm going to go grind that back. I'm still on the same grinding disc. 
I'm gonna go flip it over, try to clean up that inside edge and see if I can get some weld to stick to that rust. Yeah, you can see how much it pushed through. And there's a piece of wire sticking out. How porous it is, just probably just from sitting outside with water stacking in it. How it's corroded. The other side doesn't have much at all. I can get in with the grinder. The, the problem is trying to get right into the very edge of the room, maybe even a cut and just be better, just get the dirt out of there. Cause that's what causes that porosity to pop through is just the contamination from underneath. Sometimes uh, flux core is better for doing stuff like this for dirty, nasty metal. But I'll give her, give her a shot, see what happens. Well, I got in there first with a wire wheel and then I came back with a grinder. Did the best we could. See all those little rust pockets though? That's the stuff that pushes the contaminants out. You're welding all of a sudden you hear that little popping sound and all. That's the crap coming out of there. I wish I had a roll of flux core. I'd switch over to that, but we're gonna do the best we can. Anything, anything's better than what it, what it was, right? Don't touch it. It's hot. You can see where I first started. How all that porosity was in there, and as it went along, got a little better. Probably go a little hotter. You see the bead isn't really sitting down into the metal. It's kind of standing on top of it. Oh well. Practice, practice. I'm probably going to start a little higher. I'm going to try going over that a little bit, see if I can go clean that and give it a little bit more strength, then jump over to the other side. And the second pass definitely helped a lot better. You can see it's kind of floating in a lot, lot more. Plus, I think it's pushed out some of the moisture on the first pass. Still far from perfect, but it'll hold the bucket together. All right, now we'll get the second side done. Yeah, second side, I just cranked up the welder more. That's a single pass. I think I'm going to leave it like that. Our next one is right here. So this is what I'm gonna try digging in. I'm gonna try getting, this is fairly thick. My guess is eh, three eighths of an inch, quarter inch, three eighths of an inch. So I wanna try to get a, a groove in there so you can get the weld to fit down inside. So you're not just kind of like stacking a weld on top, having a crack below it and uh, a weld on the other side. You kind of wanna try to get to melt, weld from both sides and have the weld puddle go from the, the top and the bottom and meet each other and melt everything in between. Before we do that, let's go flip it over. We're gonna wire wheel it. We're gonna find out where it stops and we'll drill a hole to try to stop it from traveling any further in the future. Looks like someone's been here before us too. There's one there and there's one there and I haven't done those. Those were done before I got it back 20 years ago. Looks like the crack stops right about, about there. Go grab a drill, drill that out. I'm going to take a flapper disc and I'm going to get some of the rust off the sides of it. close of what we got. So I got it beat out pretty good. And like I said, a hole drilled at where the end of the crack is right there. So I'm gonna fill that. It's probably a little less than halfway. We'll see how that works out. We still have the other side to do, but while it's in this position, I'm gonna weld this side up and then we'll flip it over and do the same to the other.
That's pretty good. Happy with that one. Flip it over, do the same. You can see what we got dealing with the other side. I'll do the same thing. Probably gonna try to grind out maybe even a little deeper so I can get down to like touching the weld on the other side and then we can backfill it up to there. Got most of it out. Still, you can still see a little bit of the crack up inside there, but I'm down, all this here is all down to the weld from the other side. But it's fairly deep. The camera's picking it up. That's warm. All right, let's go fill that up. Yeah, that one laid in there pretty nice. Happy with that. All right, I'm gonna give it a once over, see if I see any other issues with it. I'll give them a quick touch up with the welder and then we'll move on to something else. I got the air purging out of here a little bit. Maybe we'll fire it up while the garage door is open and the fans are on and we'll cycle some of the hydraulics and see if we can see any drippage or moisture or a line that's having an issue. I'm kind of suspecting that fitting right there. It's a little cockeyed, broken maybe. I don't know. So let's go fire it up, run them a little bit, see if we can see we get any drips going on, anything. That might be everything that it is, and it's running right down and kind of filling up that area and dropping from there. Let's go see. Trying to make a break for it. I disturbed his... Uh... The bother you. He's gonna jump right on the lens. He's gonna see himself and attack it. Kind of where we thought. Right there, stripping. Right at the fitting. Looks like it maybe took a hit. Yeah. That gonna fall right off of there. Let's go run that in the down position. I think it's gonna snap right off right as a crack in it. We'll see about getting one of those. I, don't, I would think there'd be like a little bit of a ball there. Let's go find out. Try to get it where there's no pressure on it. Well, hopefully it doesn't squirt us in the eyes. We need we need to support that this one, right? Should be able to spin this collar off. And any pressure that's in it should. 
wouldn't say it was all that tight, but I want to look at the end of that. I want to see if you have any issues. See if we crack that or not. Nice. If all we gotta do is put a wrench on it. Yeah, let's get that right out of there. Try to. Wash it up. It's not a. It's too late today to go get one, but. Guys are standing where I need to be. You think I'm being clumsy? I am being clumsy, but let's right. go take a quick peek at that. See if it took on any damage. Well, that though. Let's see if we can shove something in to keep it from bleeding. Does that work? I think so. Yeah. There you go. Use our old man eyeballs. I'm looking at that. So this, the center of this is one piece. It kind of goes up, looks like a mushroom. That part of the fitting looks like a mushroom and it's, it is bent. If I spin it, see how it's got like a wobble to it? So, but did it crack it? I don't know. See something looks like a line, I'm looking right down in the middle there. Like something I see that looks like a line, whether that's a crack or not. I guess what we could do is just, Throw it back on and tighten it up. And cycle it a couple times, see if you get anything. At least we know what the leak is, though. I'm also trying to look down the, the throat there, see if I can see any kind of line on the inside, but that's kind of next to impossible. Right, let's go bolt it back up, fire it up a little bit more, and see if it'll uh, continue to piss out. If it does when it's tight, then we know that's definitely got a crack in it. So I'm out back here, I'm looking a little bit more. I do see. That's one of the swing cylinders, and that is wet on the bottom too. You know, I should probably get a rebuild kit or a couple on hold. It's probably all the same cylinder diameter. That one looks okay. Probably try tightening the packing up a little bit too, but I don't think that's going to do anything. I think just the uh, seal is probably gone. All this wetness over here, though, is, I think this guy, when he's in the up position, running down. Kept that lubricated. All right, so keep it on that one. All the other ones look pretty dry though. I know it's gonna move in and out of the shop, but we're gonna look right there. pressure on it. So let that set for a minute, see if we see anything. Yeah, it's been a few minutes. Actually, I think it's okay. I'm gonna get some, probably hold on to them. Probably what happened is when this arm went up, there was a piece of brush or, you know, like tree branch or something that was in the way, or it could have even been just down and something whacked the cylinder, uh, whacked the line and gave it a bend. And then when it bent, it kind of loosened itself up. So it is a little compromised, but it's holding good. Let's go move on to uh, something else. Yeah, clean it definitely does show its boo-boos. So I see a crack and right across there. There isn't one on the other side. The other side's the pedal for forward and reverse. It doesn't even have this. There's a crack there. You can see it's starting around the end of that. And then again on the other side it, it's all the way across on the other side. Yeah, like that. So I guess I can grind it back. And then maybe I'll make like a little horseshoe plate that goes around here and then we can buzz around the outside. I may do that off camera. We've done enough welding already. Uh, let's go chase a bunch of the smalls and wait for that band. We'll give as much time as possible for that band to dry up and we'll get that hooked up. So let's go get that. That's only got 25 hours on it, 24 hours. 
since I changed the oil in the tank and put a filter on it. But we're, since we're here, I got a new filter. Let's go write some new hours on that. Just change the filter out and maybe we'll look into that ignition switch. See if there's anything we can do with trying to get it so it stays running. Yeah, so the gearbox, gearbox, the hydraulics use, um, what are we at? 2000, one for hours and 20, 22, 2022 and six. Probably go over that with black, huh? Anyway, yeah, it uses uh, 1030 motor oil, no hydraulic fluid. This nothing fancy, which is good. Eh, should be good enough. So let's say we could go work on that emergency brake setup. So the brake is in the, I think the off position right there. Down. And it hasn't been used in forever. And I think this is an adjustment. The, the cap, I think you wrote, you're supposed to rotate it and it will give you different tension. I see it's got a set screw in it. Maybe they got to take that out. But I think that's what the adjustment was. I think it pulls up higher and lower on this knuckle. I like to try to run it all the way down and get the band on because as it wears, it gives us some adjustment, which still looks like it's in the window. But first I'm going to go throw some lube on these pivot points. And then maybe we'll get that screw out of there. See if we can kind of free up this whole assembly. Be all just seized up too. Just screw on the end of it. Spray some lube around it. It's been a day or two, huh? I think we're good enough for that. It's not like something that you're gonna adjust all the time. It's just gonna be the one time you find where the tension is. We'll run that all the way back down. That'll be the least when we flip it up. You gotta see how that cable's working underneath too. So I worked it back and forth up top, but the cable does not change, does not push back, let's just say. So hopefully I can go throw a pair of ice grips on the end of that and kind of give her a tug a little bit and see if that cable moves. If not, we have to try to get that cable out of there and then free it. It's probably right where that sharp bend is right there. That's uh, causing it. Let's see. Got some slide hammer of ice grips. Let's see if we can get those on there. Give a tug. I'm gonna eyeball roughly where it is. Shouldn't move much. I probably should move about a half inch, but let's go get that a little rub mark on the drum. Let's see if it. <laughs> Think that did anything? 
<laughs> Let's go see the fiddle. Uh, well, it looks to me like it lines right back up with what it was. I'm going to go and shoot some oil up in this side of the cable where I can see it. And I'm going to go turn that turnbuckle up on the other end and give her. Because looking by those threads, you guys like, don't, what are you talking about? I am looking at those threads right there, all the rust that's on them, and there's no room really to get in there. And it's not like you could spin the cable really on the other end. So we'd have to try to get in there with a wrench and give that thing a little bit of a tweak, a little bit of a tweak. <laughs> and I am not looking forward to it. You tried shoving the cable through a socket, maybe? You with that now. All right, I'm gonna go tug on it the other way, see if we can get anything out of it. So I still have the slide hammer on the bottom, and it's just I lowered the lift just so it's touching the floor, so I could have like an idea if it if I lift it if it came up off the floor, I would know what the cable moved. And I ran this up, I don't know about three quarters of an inch, but <laughs> I don't think it's happening. I think it's so frozen. that I could spend a couple hours trying to get that to move and you know possibly get that out of there but just the way that that nut is I know it's just rotted on there and not going to be able to get a good way to spin that off of there you know you get a wrench on it you put the wrench on it you get like that much of a movement flip it try to get that much of a movement out of it I think time better spent might be trying to find a new one if I can't find a new one then maybe I'll chase trying to uh fix this one but for now I think we're gonna go move on because that's gonna end up using up the rest of my day I don't have much time left so with that let's go move on to uh, let's take a look at that ignition switch there's the back of that ignition switch and sometimes it wasn't even doing anything what even crank I don't know if it's got uh, issues on the external they're looking kind of cruddy it looks like someone's actually I don't know if that's factory or not I would think they'd look more something like this maybe the switch has already been replaced I don't remember doing doing so and that's a it's a screw together one but it's got the big tabs on it I grabbed another switch. I'm looking, I'm hoping to pull one of these away and just see a bunch of crap sitting behind them. It would run and die. That one. That looks like it saw some heat too, doesn't it? Yep, yeah, that's live. It was live. <laughs> see if it this is good it's not corroded sometimes like this doesn't get used for long stretches at times and then it gets used the contacts inside the switch also get a little screwy they uh, just get corrosion on them sometimes if you work the switch it'll it'll get better too I think I just saw it did you see it Right there, it arcs. Let's see if I'll do it again. I don't know if the camera caught it. It's tight. I bet you that little ground wire, though. Yeah, right there. It arced. Like, decently, too. It wasn't like... So, that made for a high resistance spot. I would suspect that, maybe over the switch it's like you should probably do something with that battery too because that bolts running into it it's got a shelf here to stop it from falling out but i think we should be not chomping on that should we all right let's go pull this back let's go open that up and take a look for corrosion i think it was this one it looked like it was even further back i hope the camera caught it find out yeah batteries out of the way let's go see 
got for I would definitely say that does not make a very good connection. And I'm not sure what its purpose is on the switch being a ground going to the switch. But the fact that it drew sparks through it definitely was an issue. So this, this actually kind of looks like the, the hold down. Is this the hold down for the top of the battery maybe? Would make sense, wouldn't it? I am going to a wire wheel the crap out of that and then put some grease on it. I wonder if this is supposed to be like on, on bolted, and then maybe like an, a, a separate nut and bolt for this part of it to move the battery around. Seems kind of weird that you would try to go through that to make good contact. If we got enough room, maybe we'll do that. We'll try to run both them down and then use this by itself. Yeah, I'm gonna try doing that. I'm gonna try bolting it by itself. Get some grease out. Okay, man. Poop some grease on there. Try to keep rust from forming behind it. Let's do the same at the ends. Let's get a little to. And then. Where the little. There it is. That one. So we should probably put maybe that one on first. It's just welded on. That's not a bolt that goes through the other side. So look at that one. That one. And then we'll get a. I'm not gonna put a washer on that one. I'm just gonna run it in. Hopefully it doesn't spin the cable. Let's see what we get. Ooh, nope, that one up there above it. That's the wrong way. That's good. Now hopefully we got room for two washers. Right. We have to go a little bigger. Just lost that one. Go with that. A bracket. A washer. And then nut. I don't even know if it's gonna work for that battery anyway, but that gives us a separate uh, tie-in point instead of trying to rely on the same contact for the for that. Alright, we'll go shove that battery back in there, clean those terminals up, and see how we make out. Yeah, it's definitely what it's supposed to be for, but I'm not going to be able to get on it with this battery. I wonder if I could swap. I don't know if I have anything here that has this battery layout maybe a little shorter, and we could steal it just to put a different one in there. My other thought is if you just bolt a hole, drill a hole next to it. Make another spot to hold it down. That would probably work too, huh? Let me take a quick look, see if we can find another battery. If not, maybe that's what we'll do. We'll just kind of hammer that where it's a little bit more flat, put some down tension on the battery. And that keep it, actually it might be good like that because it pushes it that direction and it's up against that saddle. Yeah, that might work out. All right, how good are you at eyeballing? We need it right about Let's see, that's our, make that our center line. And we gotta come down to about right, right about there, should put it in the middle. So we'll go something like that. 
and like that. Let's punch a hole right there. And let's see where we come out. I can live with that. A little high. Maybe give us a little bit of room going downward, but that should be enough. We could always, like I said, we could bend that tab down a little, put a little bit of pressure if we have to. Yeah, that worked out better. Got its own bolt, old tensioner. You don't have to take any of this stuff apart to deal with the battery. And the battery's wedged between there and there. And it's off the bolt. I wonder if I should trim a little bit of that. Eh, that's all right. It's not touching it. Shouldn't bounce around. It was bouncing around before. It didn't do any damage. <laughs> Bolted down. It should be okay. All right, I'm going to get those terminals on. I'm going to go grease them up. Let's go bump the key a couple of times to make sure we're good. Let's go bump the key a couple of times see what we get. Nothing, right? <laughs> That was starter. Once in a while, the starter doesn't catch too. Here we just the uh, solenoid kicked out, but the it didn't crank. Like that right there. That's on the starter. I'll keep an eye on that again. That's what happens. The stuff sits. Yeah, I missed all together. <laughs> so I run out of gas if I leave the hood open. So that's the pickup at the top of the tank. Normally that's laying down. Fill it up. Alright. Well, a couple things to keep an eye on still. Like, you gotta find the emergency brake cable we need. See if the ignition uh, issue cures itself. You know, unfortunately, without kind of running it, cycling it, hard to tell. I can say it's good now, but uh, later on, it can start acting up again. I think our hydraulics are okay. Let's go take a peek on that. That's been under pressure the whole time, so it's been an hour or so. And I don't see anything. Again, this is under pressure, so if it's gonna go. I'm still gonna order that. I don't like the fact that it's bent. That means it already is kind of compromised. All right, anything else to go, Chase? I know I got some more welding to do. I don't know if that's gonna get done today, though. I was hoping to get the emergency brake part done. Another thing. Another thing that's been annoying on this is the gas cap it does not seal. It doesn't even feel like it touches. Is that adjustable? It'd be funny if we just need to turn it out. I know this part is the, the part that puts the, the spring pressure on it. What's that? That's just a bolt holding it. But it seems like it leaks. And sometimes you even get crap in it. Let's go see if we can take that screw out of the center there. And yeah, I think maybe it's even missing. The rubber part might not be there. I don't know if that's metal or if that's the rubber and it's just petrified. Yeah, let's go get that out of there. You were gonna yell at me if I didn't put a rag there, weren't you? Oh, I heard you. Think that's the gasket or you think it's metal? It is like a piece of petrified something. Yeah, or is it rock? I wonder if there's something we can replace that with, or can we put this back in but get like that one of the O-rings out of it? A gas can, a gas cap. Go look, see what I can find. Yeah, it's it's pretty hard. That that wasn't going to seal very well. Plus the rust around the edge of it. Let's go check in gas capy stuff and see if we have. That's what I was thinking, something like that part of it. Let's go grab that. Is there any more in here? 
That's a radiator cap. That's gonna be metal anyway. Anything else in here? Not in that one anyway. Let's take that one apart. I would think there's another screw going. You know, let's bolt it together. I think because I think that goes under there. I'll probably drill that out. Let's go. I'm gonna go pop, get a little screwdriver, and see if we can work that out of there. I think I think it's pinched together though. I, I actually would prefer that because if it's smaller, you know, we need to get. Eh, it might work. We just need this to hold it down in place. Let's just see if we can a little pull out of there. I don't want to damage it either. Maybe. It is wedged under there. If we can get it. Yeah. Looks like it'll go, huh? Should probably grab it like a little pair of pliers or something. We'll just do that. And we know it'll hold up the gas, because it's off of the gas cap. And with that, we could screw down and have this be the mating surface instead of that other piece. We could probably leave that other piece even in there too as a backer. And let's go put it the rest of it. Let's put it back together. Alright, what do you think? With or without this piece? It's got it flipped over. That would make the correct seal. Well, that would hold everything in place. Let's just try that. Because I, I think if I get rid of that, we're going to end up hitting... I think the metal's going to hit. What happens is you, you put a full tank in it, and you fill it up. Until it runs down to about half a tank as you're using it, it starts splashing out over the hood. Yeah, looks like we get a good seal from the other there. Let's go see if that. How does that like it? How do you like it? It already feels better. Yeah, I think that's going to do it for us. Yeah. As long as we don't contact the metal ring anywhere, which I don't think we are. If anything. I don't, think, I don't think we're going to be able to influence it anyway, right? Let's see if we can push that ring up. I'll take whatever little slack is there. I'll get it here. I'll get to this upward. I think we got it. Good. I don't need that anymore. Well guys, I would like to have gotten everything completed, but it's just not going to happen. I'm unfortunately out of time. I got some other stuff I need to go do. This was a necessity. I had to kind of move it forward in the line of stuff for us to play with and work on. I got some cool stuff uh, coming up, some uh, older vehicles that uh, we should be doing some runs on. One of them's been here a long time. Another couple ones may be showing up. I'm not sure on those yet. Anyway. Uh, as far as this is concerned, we got the bucket fixed, all welded up. We found the hydraulic leak on the outrigger. I still want to get fittings for that. Uh, Cannon gave it a general look over, took care of, I think, the crank condition, which was just that poor uh, connection on the frame for the ground setup. If it's not, I'll put a new ignition switch in it. The, what else were we doing? Oh, the, the muffler, I thought the muffler was leaking and I was correct. But I changed it six months ago. Yeah, happen, it'll happen to you too as you get older. I just totally forgot. <laughs> I had it in here for, I forgot, I had to go do something to it and I was bringing it over to the cabin. And uh, the exhaust, we did an engine a while ago. It was off of a Terramite that blew up and we started it on one cylinder. We kind of blocked off one side and see if it would run on one cylinder. Well, anyway, that was the muffler that was on it. So it's the correct exhaust for a Terramite. Uh, I still have to do some more maintenance to it. I got to go through the fluids and uh, you know hit all the grease points and pivot points and, and all that kind of stuff. But it's a good little machine. Again, I've had it for 20 years. It doesn't get used much, but for when you need it, 
it definitely comes in handy and it really hasn't lost any value, so to speak, over purchasing it. And I think, I don't know what the rentals are up to now. It's probably like four or $500 a day to go get one. So, you know, what's the math on that? 16 times. If you rented it 16 times, it would be free. Not including maintenance. So I'm happy with it. It's been uh, serving me well. I made the thumb for it. That has a bracket that is welded to the boom and, and to that. And there's an arm that you put on it. It swings down and you put two pins in on the arm. And then you can, as a grapple, you can pick logs up and rocks up and move them around and set them down instead of just trying to scoop everything with the backhoe. And you swing it up out of the way when you're not using it. So that's good. I added to the bucket in the front. I welded hooks on it. I put a two inch receiver on it. It's good for kind of coming up on the trailers and moving trailers around the yard. That works out fairly well. It could, the, the, I don't know if you want to call them deficiencies on it would be, it's not four wheel drive. It can use a little more power in it. And uh, the rear end is not, it's not a, a locked diff. So if you soon you spin one tire, it's kind of stuck. So it's not really good for moving snow or anything like that. I'm sure the four wheel drive one would be okay. You know, but this one, unless you're on flat ground and you get it down to bone, uh, dry ground underneath. Once you get the tires on the snow and try pushing it, it's not too good. I made the roof for it. Uh, to keep the weather off of the inside and that is just some uh, metal roofing that you would put on like a shed or something so that's all up on there and I threw some lights up in top because it kind of sucks running it at night so you have the rear and then the front this one's out but front and rear work lights on it the plus it got headlights in the front too but they're not very good because of the basically all you do is you light and you uh, illuminate the back of the bucket arm all right, guys, <laughs> that's about it. Unfortunately, like I said, I would like to have gotten more done with it, but, uh, and ended the video with, you know, digging holes in the sand pit and maybe burning some nuclear waste or something, but it just didn't happen. So I'm not going to probably do any more video on this. I'm going to get it knocked out and we'll move on to some of the other stuff. But for now, that's it guys. Thanks. I'll see you later.